my name is Hannah Crawford and my pronouns are she, her. Hi, my name is Simi J. Patoka. My pronouns are they, them. And we are the Dreaming Divas. Welcome. We are a podcast aimed to inspire and educate young artists exploring the classical music industry. We have a wide variety of guests here to explore the perspective of what a career in the music arts looks like in our modern era. Today, we had the immense pleasure of chatting with soprano Midori Marsh, who is currently part of the Canadian Opera Company's Ensemble Studio. We talked about what happens in a young artist program, personal identity in the opera industry, and work-life balance. Before we get to the interview, we would like to acknowledge the lands we reside on in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and the greater area are not our own, but rather taken from the territory we live, breathe, work, and love upon. We acknowledge the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabewaki, Mississauga, Wendaki, Neon Wenseo, and neutral people who are the traditional stewards of these lands. We vow to be present and be okay with being uncomfortable in the practice of acknowledging land that is not our own. We take time to know, to say, and realize that our Indigenous hosts are still with us in spirit and in real life, taking up space in their rightful lands. We vow to let go of expectation of being in charge, but rather letting our Indigenous neighbours take charge as we stand beside them in solidarity. We ask you, are you listening? Are you learning? Being in this season, we are extremely grateful for the grounds, waters, and creatures that these lands provide and do not take them for granted their beauty. It is up to us to take action to protect these lands as they are not here for us, but with us. Midori, thank you so much for joining us today. We're so excited to have you on the podcast. It's been a long time coming and we're like so <laughs> grateful the day has come. I feel like we've been talking about it forever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's partially been a long time coming because I'm a huge mess. And no, it's, it's not. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's not because you're a huge mess. It's because you're a working person. You're a working <laughs> opera singer. I'm a working mess. But yes, thank you so much for having me. Okay. Um, when you're ready, would you like to start with your land acknowledgement? Yeah, sure. Um, yes, I would just like to take a moment to acknowledge that the land that I'm on is the traditional home and territory of many nations. Um, Mississaugas of the Credit, Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and Wendat peoples and is home to many other First Nations people and Métis people and um, that I'm so lucky to live in Tuckeronto, to make art here, to work here, and to build connections here. Um, it's such a beautiful place to live that has been so welcoming to me since I arrived. And I know that I have to give back the good um, experiences that I've had to the land and that I have a responsibility to care for it and to um, work in harmony with its traditional caretakers. So, you know, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Same. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Hannah, you want to do this? Just happy to be here, y'all. <laughs> just, just freaking happy to be here. Just happy to be vibing. It's a great time up here in <laughs> Toronto. Heck yeah. Um, um, just... So we always start with a little bit of course my phone turns off we start with a 60 second life story oh my god i will tell you so you can be stressed out about it perfect um you can barely see it because it's the middle of the day um so when you're ready okay i'll okay. press start try to turn yes. your camera away from the window there that's it look at her look at me go oh i'm getting hold on guys ah hold on <laughs> notifications miss popular oh. all right <laughs> deep breath and then I'll be ready. Go. All right. Once time, um, a little Gemini was born in Cleveland, Ohio, and her name was Midori Marsh, a name which means green in Japanese because she was born in June um, in the summer months and everything was lush and green. Um, I grew up a true suburban girly, a Midwest girly, a Great Lakes girly. And I have always been completely loud and annoying and loved performing. Um, 
and I did musical theater in high school. I was in like three million choirs. I um, was a dual citizen, so I knew I wanted to come to Canada for school. Popped up to Laurier for a quickie little undergrad degree. Um, did my opera diploma there as well. Was a giant mess, but made it through and got my degrees, damn it. Um, moved to Toronto, got my master's degree, uh, applied for my dream job um, in the Canadian opera company, Young Artist Ensemble. Got it somehow. Um, great photo, got to be in some shows. Oh, COVID happened also, I was there for that. Um, but eventually I got to get back to life a bit and get back to work, be in some main stage productions at the COC and a whole bunch of other stuff happened. Woo! Yeah. You were a little vocal, but it's okay. <laughs> I like an extra, an extra 10 seconds because of Hannah's little uh, <laughs> mishap at the beginning. Yeah, I started it and immediately turned it off. <laughs> Iconic. Well, you left off at the perfect point for us to start. So let's mm -hmm. talk about the COC and all that you've done with them. This is your third year with them now, right? This is my third year. I am getting a third year, um, a pity year because of COVID. So hooray for that. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Hannah and I are not in opera company yaps. Hannah's in a yap. I am not in a yap. So as someone who has yet to do something like what you're doing, what actually happens in a yap? Like you're on stage, but also what else goes on? <laughs> uh, a lot of freaking work. Um, but I guess like if for the work to feel consistent, lots of it has to come from you. Like being in production is hectic and busy, but there are um, these kind of in-between times um, where you have to kind of drive a lot of your own growth and work. And the lesson that I've just been forced to learn like every year, basically since I turned 18, is that if I do what I wanna do in those down periods, which is nothing, I will sorely, sorely regret it when it really comes time to be super busy and hectic. So yeah, I think like evening out the workload of your own year really is your responsibility. Otherwise it's like huge peaks and valleys, but yeah, it's lots of work and it's lots of singing and yeah. So do you get like, you get lessons and coachings and also some body work too. I know at the COC, oh, like yeah. the trio of Liz Upchurch, Wendy Nielsen and Jen Swan. Speaking like in a totally like, you know, more clinical scheduling way. Yeah, we do coachings, um, coaching in languages, musical coachings, voice lessons, diction coachings, um, body movement coachings. We'll have um, coachings or lessons with visiting staff for productions. Um, we do noon hour concerts. We do outreach concerts. Um, we... Yeah, we have coachings with the ensemble pianists. Um, yeah, definitely a couple other things, but the the main, yeah, like the main trio, uh, Liz Upchurch, Wendy Nielsen, Jen Swan, and Stephen Lee, the diction coach as well, are like our main homies. Yeah, it's like the Holy Trinity and then God, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> I had a lesson with Stephen yesterday and he was like, okay, so Jen Swan does this thing and I'm gonna try it on you. And I was like, work, I feel like I'm at the COC now. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> yeah, it was great, it was great. And it worked. So look at Jen Swan go. Look at her go. That is so amazing. And so like on a day-to-day, week-to-week -week basis for the listeners, cause I do know, cause we've talked about this, like because you have your peaks and valleys, like how frequently can you get these opportunities to work with these people? Is it like you try as much as you can to fit it into your slower time or is it consistent every week? Oh, the only thing that's consistent is inconsistency, but uh, there really are, like when it comes to that, there's like these real rules, like equity rules and like how much you can work in a day. So if you're really like in the full swing of production, oftentimes you're working six hours a day on the production and um then in the downtimes you get a lot more coachings to fill out your like time in a day um but yeah it's it's like sometimes it can feel like it's been a while since you've had a voice lesson and you're like oh, I don't remember how to sing but things usually fall into place a bit when you're really in production you kind of worry about things a little less you just don't have the time to be concerned <laughs> 
True. And then you go, so obviously you're not in every single opera, but so right. you have, you have small moments of downtime, shall we say? Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. moments where you're pulling your hair out. <laughs> it really, it really depends on how your year looks. So, you know, it can really kind of, the chips can fall in any way, just like a regular year of your career. It's true. So how do they go about casting you in the roles in the main stage? Because last season you had two smaller roles. You had Papagena and you had, oh no, what's her name? Anina the main. Anina. Thank you. <laughs> in Taviata. I mean, there's like, there's genuinely so much that goes into it that I just like wouldn't even be able to comprehend with my like tiny peon brain. Like, you know, the way that opera contracts work is so like, it's, it's so crazy because you can really, you can book someone out like three or four years in advance. Like, yeah, it's just about where you fit, where they can use you and like where you can be happy and useful. So you mentioned that you were a dual citizen before you came to Canada, which I, I know a little bit about how that works, but why in the heck did you move to Canada in the first place? Oh, for such a boring reason. Um, school is really expensive in the U.S. and it's yeah. cheaper you're a citizen and I was like well I might as well give that a shot so I'm not drowning in debt forever which I probably just will do anyway just for fun um so and yeah I got some very strong advice to check out Laurier mm -hmm. so it and yeah I really enjoyed my time there good it was, how, how are you a dual citizen my mom was born in Hamilton Ontario oh okay and like they had to apply for my sister and myself to become for my sister and me to become dual citizens, but luckily I was a baby and I had nothing to do with it because I know it was probably such an annoying process, but because they did that, I will say moving up here and kind of like getting my life going was not very difficult. Easier than I, than I expected, honestly. It's easier with citizenship. That's for, yeah. for Hannah and uh -huh. I were just talking to our friend who's from Brazil and it's just trying to get permanent residence. And it's been, what, two years, she was saying? Yeah. It's, it's super hard. I was even looking into getting dual because my mom's American. And I was like, okay, let me go start filling it out. And I look at it and it was literally like, there's like certain, like it depends on which parent is from where and then like what year. And so my mom moved a, a year before the gap or whatever. So I don't qualify and I'm like, <laughs> what that dumb that's a bummer since we were just talking about education the whole reason you came up here mm. how was your education journey what would you change if anything I mean there's a couple things there's kind of two um answers to this one is the things that I would change about myself and the way that I attacked my education I mean, I'm not sure how realistic it is to kind of change the structure of who I am as a human being, but I flailed my way through undergrad and, you know, working professionally now, there's some things that I wish that I had given myself a stronger foundation for, um, you know, past me, what a little bitch. I'm like, you lazy, you lazy bitch. I'm like, we could be speaking some decent German by now, but you know, I, I feel like um, anyone who listens to this, who's an undergrad, just devote some more time to language learning, pick one, or depending on how your brain works, you could just dabble in, you know, and it's, it's whatever you want. It doesn't necessarily have to be French, Italian, or German, although those will, if you want to be in this career, those will be the ones that help you the most, um, especially Italian and German, I believe, but, you know, just keep your brain open and find out ways to communicate with as many people as possible. Like, you know, if certain languages interest you, pursue them um, and then, you know, brush up on your German or whatever, but you'll meet so many people like from all over the place, like, you know, places that you would never associate with opera. Like you will meet singers from there, conductors from there, like we're all over. And I wish that I had taken a little bit more time, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. But yeah, if I could go back in time, I would tell myself to really focus on languages and to find more joy in my own process and in the details of singing. Because when you're younger, especially if you're like me and like all you want to do is perform, then you think, oh, like all these details are bogging me down. They're getting in the way. I just want to sing. 
but those details are singing. You know, if you can clear away the things that distract people from your voice, like sloppy vowels or, um, you know, poor addiction or you know, anything like that, like these things that feel so tedious to work on, if you can like really kind of massage perfection into your like process, I mean, as perfect as you can get, perfection's like not really real, but the more, like the devil's really in the details. I would tell myself that too. I don't know if I would have believed myself um, and it could have turned out the exact same way, but that's advice that I would give. And then broader, like just if I could go into the kind of North American education system and change things, like there's a lot I would do. That's a whole other conversation. But I think really the best thing to do is like practical work. And um, yeah, I don't know. There's, there's really, of course, something to be said about like having a good foundation of basics, history, theory, and musical skills. Um, but yeah, there's a lot that gets lost in like administrative bullshit, admin stuff, and then just like the kind of crushing drive of like secondary, post-secondary education. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's a whole other conversation. So I'll leave it there for now, but this hope that answers your question. All good critical feedback. Do you, <laughs> do you think that your path in education though was well worth it? Yeah, I would say so. I guess I really would say that just because I can't imagine being where I am now without it. Mm -hmm. uh, even just to be in a place where you can grow um, and learn, like university pressure is like, it's a beast, but it's, it's a different beast than the pressures from like, quote unquote, real life yeah. to get to step away from that is very formative for a lot of young people. It's obviously not for everyone. And I know people in this business who are working very successfully with, you know, without the traditional education route. So if you really know it's not for you, forget it, like do what you need to do. But, you know, for me, yeah, I can't imagine being where I am now without doing what I did in school. Good good yeah I, I agree and that, and I think that's something that I talk to a lot of young singers about too because like I'm not doing a master I'm not going back to school like I really enjoy school I I seek good marks like I'm really good at school but when I look back I was never in class to learn I was always in class to get good marks and I hate yeah. that I want to actually learn. So doing it on my own time in the real world has just worked better for me. But that's not the case for everybody. Some mm -hmm. people really like the accountability, the way that the lesson plans are working. Mm -hmm. so it just depends on the person. So I'm glad that you're like, True. I'm happy. It's yeah, good. it worked for me. <laughs> well, it's yeah. like two opposite ends. Like Simi and I both don't aren't going for a master's, but we're both successful in our own, own way too. So it's everybody's different. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it depends on your own idea of success, too. Exactly. Anyways, let's, you keep calling yourself a mess. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I'm let's, happy. and you're happy? <laughs> That's the point. In such a loving, mostly forgiving way. Um, obviously, there are things that I'm working on because, like, you know, that's the joy of life to like grow and change and improve whatever that means to you. You know, if improving is like, oh, before I could only eat three hot dogs and now I can eat five. Like, do you know, that's improvement in something. I really feel like I'm not afraid to say I'm a mess and I don't totally feel that it's derogatory because it's a scary thing to say in this industry where I think everybody wants to be like fluent in five languages and perfect and like, oh my God, this isn't like an, I'm not like other girls thing. I think I am like other girls. And I think the girlies are like, everyone's a mess in their own way. And we shouldn't be nervous to talk about it because, you know, I know young artists, especially femme people, women, like minorities feel afraid. We feel like very, um, driven to be perfect or present this image of perfection. Like, you know, if you can learn and memorize a song 
in you know, a day and it's last minute, people might think that that's really messy, but if that's something you can do, then it's just, it's just how it is for you. Like, um, it could be I, considered a strength, honestly. Yeah. I always said like, I, I wanted to get become, you know, somewhat successful just so that I could show other people who feel like they're a huge giant fucking mess that it's actually fine. Like you just have to figure out your process, what you need to do. And if it seems messy to other people, or if you feel like a mess, but you still get the work done that you need to get done and are a good colleague, then it's totally fine. And you shouldn't be nervous to talk about it. Mm -hmm. That being said, and I appreciate all of that because I feel like anyone listening has felt like a mess at some point in their life, if 100%. not every day, you know? Yeah. Um, that being said, though, like, especially because you're saying, like, your schedule is kind of crazy a lot of the time. What is the work-life balance for you like? Mm, I think I'm, I'm kind of suited to an inconsistent work schedule because I feel that I, you know, like I said, I feel like the only real, um, consistent thing in my life is that I, that it's inconsistent except I brush my teeth every day and I floss every day that is very consistent um but yeah I, I feel like um for singers especially singers who are the kind of more driven type a people which I am not but I know a lot of and love a lot of people like that um just like, don't be afraid to take the time where you can take it. Um, you know, don't get too caught up in planning because like things just change so last minute in, in this line of work. Um, yeah, like try to take time whenever you can take it. Don't fill all your free time with work. Um, because then maybe the time that you were planning to have off, you just won't get off. And if you were like, just like hinging your life on that, you like, you might really, <laughs> you might really suffer a bit. So yeah, take, take the nap when you can take it. Like, you know, go out for dinner when you can go and yeah, try not to worry too much. Nap more guys. I started napping, changed my life. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Naps, and they're the fucking best. Like I sleep better at night too. I think. Like I just sleep for yeah. like 30, 40 minutes and I'm like, good to go. Yeah. Naps yeah. are kind of my bitch now. Like when I, like before I went to Italy, I could not nap. Like I could not calm my body enough to sleep mm -hmm. during the day. And then in Italy, it's too freaking hot to do anything in the middle of the afternoon. Anyways. And air like presses on you like a blanket. Yep. It's like, you can't breathe. So all like, that's, that's why they take time off in the afternoons in Europe when it's really hot. Cause there's just nothing else your body can do besides sleep like yeah. close to death sleep yeah so yeah since coming back naps are my bitch i love them love that love that for you. let's let's also pivot that taking a break and singing is normal taking a break from singing is sometimes needed it's so normal and, and good yeah um and sometimes like when you come back even if you weren't practicing or working, something has sort of clicked into place. Exactly. And it's so fun. Give yourself that. It's Even honestly if it's a day. so true. Yeah. And I know you yeah. were kind of looking at me there, Hannah. I know. I know. Yeah. yeah. No, you've been doing good. You've been doing good. I know. I know. I think the roles are reversing a little bit here over here. Well, now you're like literally have to do something every day. And oh, even though I have never had to do something every day since graduating, <laughs> just <laughs> done it. But anyway, anywho, anywho, I feel like in this field, there's a lot of pressure on how we look. Mm -hmm. uh, I think all of us, especially being femme presenting people have experienced this. Um, okay. And even more so people who are plus size uh, experience that all the freaking time. And it's as if like Hannah and I were just talking about this, the people who are pointing it out are saying it as if you didn't already know, like <laughs> this is not the body that you live with and love and treat and all of these things. So uh, if you're comfortable talking about it, we obviously don't have to, but like, are you comfortable talking about your ED and your recovery process through that? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'll talk about, 
what I feel is kind of the reality of the situation. Um, because like after kind of just like fighting my way out of some severely like disordered eating patterns and thought patterns and really learning to love for and care about myself and my body and, and try to make my way towards a more neutral perspective on things. I think what really is the most difficult after all the dust settles from that, Mm -hmm. um, the most difficult thing to grapple with is that I can't love myself out of, um, experiencing like hiring discrimination based on how I look like obviously it's very good to be confident and there's a lot you can do for yourself and you know I I want to say that the most important thing is the voice um which obviously you know there's always things to work on with that but I think what's difficult to grapple with is the fact that no matter how much I love and care about myself, it really could come down if it's between me and another person to who they find, you know, more aesthetically pleasing, better looking. And that's a problem. It's not out of my hands. You know, I want to make changes in an industry that I work in and that I care about. But yeah, I think it's important to take care of yourself when it comes to stuff like that. And, and just know that like, you know, if, if it's some, if someone's not hiring you because of how you look, that is not a place you want to work. Even if you think you want to work there, you will not have a good time once you're there. So just like, let go and let God. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. The decision's out of your hands, basically. Yeah. That's actually such a good point that I don't think I had heard like you always know about like you want to work a, like at a wonderful place until you realize it's shitty and then you don't want to work there but putting it into this type of perspective is a really good way of looking at it because I don't think I looked at it like that before so thank you mm-hmm. of time and one more thing is that you know shit is so hard I know I know it's hard and you know so many people like I I know way more people who have a fucked up relationship with food than I know who have a good, normal, healthy one. Um, I know things are hard and I know like being a person is hard and having a body is hard, but the more you can love and like care for your body in whatever way that means for you, like whether it's stopping negative self-talk or going for a 20 minute walk every day or whatever it means, like it can really, it's, it has to be so tailor-made. Like there's literally not one thing except for probably drink water Yeah, (laughs) for everybody. But like the more you are able to like care for and connect with yourself, the easier it'll be to sing or things that feel difficult singing wise will get easier. So don't punish your body. It's going to complicate things. Even if you think like, oh, this is what I should be doing. Like I should be torturing myself to become a better artist, like Mm -hmm. care for yourself and it will help. I believe. Yeah. Care for yourself and the rest will come. Exactly. Yeah. Now you're speaking my language, especially with the health stuff. I'm like, cause especially like being in the opera industry, but also in the fitness industry, everything is so based on aesthetics. It drives me crazy. Like I kind of fall into an average in both of those realms. So like, that's fine. But like, it, it kills me to see like these perfectly healthy people who are like hurting themselves and their diet and their exercise plan, all of these things, because they think it's going to make them look better and give them more success in life. And it, oh my gosh, breaks my heart because it's yeah. like, it should be about how well is your body functioning? Can you sing? Are you singing at your best? Can you move? Are you moving at your best? Like that's what really matters. But People suck sometimes. So anywho, um, Midori, you are out and proud about being a queer lady. What is, <laughs> what is that like in the opera world? Have you experienced anything negative or positive, positive obviously preferred, regarding your identity? I think the positives for me are really finding um, community like the arts have always been a safe space yeah. for gay people, queer people, gender non-conforming people. And even though opera has kind of a rep, like we're out here, like, you know, there's lots of us out here making art, you know, in traditional and non-traditional ways, like to watch 
my peers and people in my community like blaze forth and kick ass makes me so happy and yeah I think I think we're yeah we're finding each other and it's always just nice you know to give the little head nod to a friend a homie a homo homo. (laughs) um a fellow a fellow homo yeah I think um you know there's unfortunately always like some insecurity depending um, and it's not just with the arts like it can be anywhere you are you think oh I don't know if it's like not even necessarily safe versus unsafe but like you know you're like I don't know if this will change the mood I don't know if people are gonna see me differently I don't know if they're gonna you know act a certain way um sometimes it's just easier not to mention it um even if you kind of like have the opportunity and I know you know that's it can be it it can feel a little unfortunate like to have to worry about that part of yourself um you know I have a lot of privilege I don't very often feel unsafe but yeah I think in this industry like I said where we're all just like desperate to maintain this perfect image sometimes you can think to yourself oh like is being queer or gay like are is people knowing that going to ruin my perfect Mm -hmm. like that's you know that can be hard but things are changing um and you can always find like community wherever you are it's true it's true so true and actually I think before this summer like I was very much like oh it's it's you know up and coming but like Mm -hmm. I was still very hesitant like openly identifying as non-binary in the field Mm -hmm. and then I went to a summer program and like most of them were queer yeah (laughs) and then I just did a show that was with the queer opera company uh queer owned and everybody in the show was queer and you know more and more I'm like oh like we're actually kind of taking over like no it's true probably more of us than there are like cis head people Mm -hmm. yeah like we love to our cis head singers and and cis people in the industry that you're you're great you're doing a great job (laughs) but but it's really nice to see I'm not the only one like oh. seeing other non-binary specifically because like the like who you go home with that doesn't always come into the rehearsal space but how people yeah. actually like speak to you and how they address you that usually has to come up so it's nice to see that you know it's not just like me and like Rebecca Cuddy and Taya Kasahara and that's kind of it it's like <laughs> there's tons of us <laughs> yeah hell yeah mm-hmm. so very grateful um we love- kind of going further into identity so you are a beautiful mixed human and (laughs) you and I have actually started talking about this before but do you want to talk a little bit about um your combination of white and Japanese descent sure um yes I'm part Japanese on my dad's side um like I said uh I do like experience a lot of privilege um but (laughs) in opera spaces I have found myself being like the least white person in a room which is just such an insanely low bar I'm like damn Mm -hmm. is it really me that's so sad like and I feel um uh you know it's like I feel responsible to not be kind of like an easy choice like if people are choosing me to be representative of something I really want to um be responsible um taking that role and really make sure that it's right for me and that I feel comfortable doing it but yeah um Yes, you know, if you are visibly a minority in kind of like any way um, in this industry, 
you know, just like protect your peace, especially, you know, for my, like, cause I, I know that whatever I've experienced is basically just like a little tiny, like tastelet of, of mm-hmm. things that like other singers and my, you know, people that I know people who are my friends that they've gone through. So yeah, just like, and, and it, again, it comes back to this kind of like image of being like the perfect, like young, um, artist or young singer or whoever it's like oh like this person made kind of a distasteful remark but I don't want to like make a fuss because it'll make me look bad like yeah no I'm not going to tell you to like run off and do something that you think will jeopardize your like career or safety but I'll just like protect your freaking peace like even if that means like finding someone to to just like vent to or you know there's people will surprise you there's a lot you can do and like you should always oh I'm kind of I'm kind of losing the plot here but just pre- like yeah protect your peace and like you know don't yeah anyways we <laughs> might have to cut some of this out I always think um just when I was starting auditioning for stuff it was always my mentality then was I can't give them an excuse to say no. So I need to appear like I'm skinny because then that means they'll say yes. Yeah. And I'm like, that's, it's just, it's shit. You can't hide. Like, I don't know what the hell I was telling myself back then, but I'm like, no, it's, I still have a tummy roll and my arms are fat. Like you can't hide it. You know, like it's such a, a bullshit excuse and we don't have to leave this in. But it's like, just show up for yourself and yourself only. You know what I mean? That kind of. Yeah. Show up for yourself and like. Yeah. Find, find people you trust because like, it's just really so much of it is just like unacceptable. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, to be kind of like confronted by, you know, a donor or whoever and and to be made uncomfortable in your workplace like no it wouldn't fly anywhere it wouldn't fly in you know lots of other places and I know because we operate on like a patron-based model like people feel so nervous but protect your peace protect yourself you know make your art Mm -hmm. and you know we'll kind of change this industry together piece by piece yeah and I think uh what has worked for me and I should hope works for most people is as soon as I started owning exactly who I was instead of trying to make myself look like what I thought they wanted that's when I started actually seeing successes yeah Mm -hmm. so like in particular for me it was like dressing the way I wanted instead of wearing like dresses and high heels and heavily femme makeup that just makes me uncomfortable and as soon as I started dressing in the way that made me feel comfortable and powerful Mm. I just performed way better and that worked for me so like I should hope that it it runs the same way when it comes to like other people's identities whether that's like body image or or race or any of that stuff but for me like that worked well and I know some others that in other ways did similar things and it worked for them so Mm -hmm. Like playing an Uno Reverso card on yourself. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like that. Yeah. Anyways, very grateful for the changes, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> and going forward, um, since COC will be ending at the end of the year for you, not the end of this year, but the end of next year, um, what your what is your future looking like? What goals do you have going forward? Oh gosh. Who knows? Um, You're so close to the camera. <laughs> this is like, cause I'm like, <laughs> obviously this is what I'm kind of thinking. This is like taking up a lot of my brain space at the moment. Yeah. Um, really, I just want to work. So if anyone who's listening to this wants to hire me to sing, I will come and sing for you. Um, yeah, I, I want to become a performer who is just confident in her own skills. Yeah. Like, I want to feel like I can take any job that um, is not going to kill me because I just know that I can do it and that I can learn the music and that I can sing it. Um, So yeah, I just hope to be working, moving and grooving. Cool. Heck yeah. I love that. Hey, (laughs) Keith. 
to finish off our hard questions, we'll say, um, yes. we ask this to everyone. What is your why? Why do you get up? Why do you do what you do? What's the whole point for? Um, my why is like, I love being alive. Um, I love life. I know like it can, it can get a little dangerous to feel like, oh, I'm so lucky to be an artist. Like I have to just like let them abuse me because I'm so lucky to be here. Mm -hmm. But without getting into that mindset, I am so lucky to do this. Like it's my favorite thing in the world. Uh, I love everything about it. And I'm like, I mean, I'm not like a yay waking up person because I'm not a morning person, but like to get started on my day and get to do what I do, I'm like, yay life. Like, yeah. I, I want to appreciate it because, you know, not only can things in this career be fleeting, but like things everywhere, you know, nothing's guaranteed to last forever. So I just want to make art and, you know, be kind and hopefully someone gets something out of it. Mm -hmm. Love. Make some money. I can buy Starbucks. Yes. <laughs> Agreed. That is your idea of success. Yeah, I just want to be able to like go out to eat sometimes. Yeah, I agree. That's actually a huge thing. I was talking about this with a another friend of mine because we were talking about my new business and how what I've realized over the last year is that I like singing is my everything. I love it more than anything else. But on top of that, I realized that I really value not being scared financially. Mm -hmm. And so that is the whole point of this. And uh and that was the thing is like i don't take up a lot of money i really just pay my rent my groceries and my voice lessons and occasionally go out to eat or mm -hmm. have a drink with friends yeah and i couldn't be scared to go have a bite with friends exactly that's just not life you know what i it's mean one of life's greatest pleasures food and friends yeah food and friends food and friends we got to make that happen you got oh yes Yes, <laughs> we we had I had a life coach session thing yesterday, and he was like, "What What do you want right now?" I'm like, "I want to be able to buy a coffee every day and not have to think twice." You know? <laughs> Shall we move on to rapid fire? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, please. Would you like to start us off, Hannah? Sure. <laughs> Hopefully, we don't get repeats this time. We didn't plan any of this. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Midori, what composer would you talk to from any era and what would you ask? Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, I'm not rapid firing this at all. <laughs> okay, most people don't. <laughs> um, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm so, I would be very interested to talk to Mozart, I think mostly because he is one of those composers who has become so mythologized um yeah that i would be so interesting so interested in like separating kind of the man from the mythology i love his music and i'm i'm kind of curious about you know how he felt about his career while he was alive considering what's become of it in the you know several centuries since he has died so yeah. yeah, no, it's it's so basic bitch of me, but yeah. <laughs> I love it. I'm here for it. But I like your reasoning. That's what makes it special. Cause some people are like, Thank I want to talk to Mozart because it's Mozart. I'm like, I, I, <laughs> I prefer Handel, sorry. <laughs> uh, what is your best stage mishap? Okay, this is not necessarily a mishap, but I have to talk about how um, last year, um, Anina, the maid, has like 10 lines of singing, but she does like a lot of hard labor on stage. Mm -hmm. I have to go out during the overture and get Violetta dressed in this huge, gorgeous, but super stressful, heavy, like awful contraption of a gown. And I like, one rehearsal, the, the first rehearsal we tried it, I couldn't get it done in time. They were like, okay, let's start over. I couldn't get it done in time again. And they were like, we just have to move on. Like go away and I was like oh god and then, um the next time I got it the next time after that I didn't get it and then it was like we were opening and 
I was like seriously shitting a brick every time I had to go out and do it. It was the worst part of the show for me. And it was the first two minutes. Like it made me feel sick. My hands would get cold and I just felt so, so nervous, but I ended up, it ended up being fine every single show. I don't know how. And thank <laughs> you for that. there's something about being in the show that like, you just gotta, like, there's just something about it. Exactly. But I'd be like hyperventilating doing it. It was awful. <laughs> Fair. Well, you you uh you you played it off very well, if I'm being Thank honest. You. Thank that you. That screen too, very helpful. It was very helpful. Very helpful. You can't see your hands like <laughs> exactly because it's like having a conniption back there. <laughs> okay. Um, if you weren't a singer, what would you be doing right now? Maybe a high school English teacher. Hmm. Um, maybe I'd be like going really hard for like voice acting or something like that. That'd be cool. Um, or God, I, I probably would have become something like equally as precarious for the job market, like a women and gender studies major or something like that. <laughs> Love it. Exactly. Who do you fan person over opera singer specific opera singer specific? Hmm. Mm. I feel like it's got to be a woman. Yeah. <laughs> um, it doesn't have to be, but you know. But for me, I'm like, what man am I fangirling over? Like, no. Um, I think Lizette Ora Pesa is amazing. Mm -hmm. I feel like I fangirl over her as like a person. Like, there's yeah. like this video on YouTube that's like Lizette Ora Pesa doing interviews in six languages. And I'm like, God damn. <laughs> crazy uh, yeah I'm impressed by so many people working right now um I think I feel like I fan person over like people that I get to meet in real life mm -hmm. um like people like Taya Kasahara or like um you know, even like my peers, like I saw Alex Hetherington and Maeve Palmer in RUR, A Torrent of Light. And I was like, what the fuck? I can't believe these are my friends. Like, they're so, they're so skilled. They're so talented. Like, they're so cool. They're so amazing. I feel like it's easier for me, you know, to fangirl if I know you because mm -hmm. then you're really like this person to me. I'm like, wow, you're a person just like me. And you're singing this like heinously difficult um, 21st century music. Wow. <laughs> I, love it. I love it if you're a singer and you know me in real life odds are i'm your fan and yeah i fangirl over you let me tell you midori every single person i talk to about you is also fan person <laughs> over you <laughs> this is literal this is real well, this is actually it's, well, what's it like being a celebrity <laughs> personing sorry it's mutual fan personing yes, yes. agreed agreed yeah, yeah. Um, do you have any special hobbies? I like to draw and paint. Um, I feel like napping is honestly a hobby. I'm yeah. very good at it. And, you know, there's like different ways to do it. I'm like, oh, do I want five minutes um, or whatever? Like, yeah, but drawing and painting is probably my biggest one. Cool. We should do like a, like a trio draw or paint like time. Yeah. Grab a, grab a bottle of Prosecco and just have at it. Do it in the park. Why not? <laughs> With orange juice. Yeah. With um, orange juice. <laughs> right. um, you already answered that question. Oh, we lost her. Uh, Me? Yeah, you're, you're gone. Your video went gone. Okay. Your video One. went gone. <laughs> I, don't, I can't English. Here. You are here. What is a guilty pleasure or bad habit you'll never break? Well, you know, I don't know if I believe in guilty pleasures. Like, <laughs> some of my pleasures are embarrassing, but I don't necessarily feel guilty. I mean, unless it's like, you know, I like to torture squirrels. You should feel guilty about that pleasure. Don't do that. Um, True. But I think... Honestly, like 
my ha- my biggest habit that I need to break is procrastinating. I wouldn't say it's like a pleasure, but it is a terrible habit. And sometimes there is a sort of terrible pleasure in like, you know, pushing something to the last minute. Yeah. Um, that and I like to eat chips for breakfast. Oh no. Okay. I love that. Chips are good. They are good. They're so good. My bad one's been eating ramen for breakfast. It's so good. The ramen that you destroyed me with? Yeah. Because it's so spicy. So good. Yum. Have, you had, have you had shin ramen, Midori? Hell yeah. Yeah. I found a vegan version for Simi in the grocery store, and I was like, I got to get this for them. And it was I've never had ramen before in my life. And it was so... I... I, I don't know but it was so spicy it hurt my tongue but it was really yummy but i won't buy it again (laughs) it's so freaking good so good um what is something that made you happy today um talking to you guys gross (laughs) um i like my outfit today you signed on and i was like okay here we go (laughs) all the fit and i was like yep yep the whole thing. Oh yeah, let's get a fit. I was gonna say I miss your, your your daily selfies on Insta. You don't do them a lot. And I saw and I got to um pet the doggy I live with this morning. He came to my room to see me. You have a, you live with a dog now? Okay. Oh, I'm here for everything. the dad shorts. This is everything. Cute. Yeah, you have to come over and eat him. His name's Chester. What is your favorite swear word in any language? Fuck. Everyone's favorite. Oh no, maybe it's bitch. I really love the word bitch. Um, I would. I literally feel like I fucking hate when men use the word bitch. I just don't think they know how to say it right. (laughs) It's the wrong context. It's just never right. Like, um, you know, it's sort of like when you learn a, a specific dialect or you learn a language, but there's a specific dialect that you can't really imitate. Like, you know, only, only bitches can like use the word in, in its right form and context. And I really do love the word bitch. And I feel like I'm not a, I'm not a mean person, but I am a bitch just because I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. I just love that word. I think bitch has like grown to have like a more positive connotation to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, bitch, you look good. <laughs> Period. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Hold on. This is my last one, right? One, two, three, four. Okay. I can count. It's fine. Um, have you ever Googled, Googled yourself? Oh, my God. Yeah, obviously. I'm a job. <laughs> yeah. Of course yeah. I've Googled. Work. Lately, <laughs> lately, I've been Googling myself because I'm trying to get, you know, when you have your website and you're trying to make it so when you put your name in, your website comes first. And so when I first built my website, it was like 5,000 different things. And my website was like on the fifth page. And I'm like, and you were like no, 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 that just won't do. So I just kept Googling until it's now it's at the top. So now that it's the SOE. Yeah. That's a- <laughs> I, I, I wish I had known that, but now it happens for my website too. Not my singer website, but my other website. So I'm like, oh, okay, it's fine. It works now. Yeah. You just <laughs> got to put your name for those watching. Just put your name all over your website on each individual page, and then it will go to the top. Okay, I see. That's good advice. Intelligence. And then you don't have to pay them to do it for you. Nice. (laughs) Oh my gosh, Midori, thank you so much for doing this with us. Would you like to tell the people where they can find out more about you? Thank you for having me. The people can find me. um, Well, your girl needs to build a website. (laughs) <laughs> so embarrassing, but I do, I do. That's one of the things that I'm procrastinating on. Um, if yeah, anyone, I do it. if I do yeah, it. if anyone is like good at building websites, I will pay you money to come over and help me. Um, Hannah, I will pay you dollars. I do it. I love it. Find me at my professional Instagram. It's underscore Midori underscore Marsh, or at my personal, it's underscore Midori underscore Bitch. Um, <laughs> you know, come hang out with me there. You can find me haunting the COC, like a, like the fucking Phantom of the Opera, just like living here, basically. Um, yeah. You can find me in the West End drinking iced coffee and walking Chester. 
Um, and you can find me at your, in the fucking audience of your recitals and your shows. As long as you tell me and invite me, I will come and bring you flowers and cheer and scream for you because I think you're amazing. Ciao, ciao. And thank you so much for having me. Thank you. That was thank the you. best one we've ever had. <laughs>point with the like actually just take the nap when you have the time and all this stuff so true yeah and i'm still trying to find this balance but when you have three jobs it is challenging because when you're not doing one job you have to do another job and when you're not doing that one you have to do the other one yeah you know what i mean